Hello everyone, I'm Brazen Eagle and thank you for joining me here. It's been a few days, but I want to give my thoughts as to the results of the Spanish election that took place last week that saw the Spanish Socialist Party come to power above all of its opposition. But before I begin, I do want to tell you that I am not Spanish, I'm not an expert in Spanish politics, but I'm looking at this election from an American and an outside point of view. So, this election, in my opinion, was a signal for the relatively near future. Uh, in this election, it showed that the socialists are mostly unified and right-wing groups are mostly disunited. Uh, I like to take a look at elections because it gives me some sort of idea as to how the people believe and where their ideologies or beliefs may be at the current moment. Who knows, in a year from now, maybe the socialists will be completely out of power, but you know what? We don't know. I care mostly about what the people think. But, in this election, the voter turnout rate was, get this, 75.8%. That's insane! At least compared to the past 100 years of the United States presidential elections. I mean, 2016 alone, the voter turnout rate was just better, or better than half of the population voting. And this was a very, I would put it as a very tight election. I mean, I, I remember staying up and just watching the Electoral College votes come in. But for at least the Spanish election, even for this Spanish election, it was a fairly high turnout rate. Three quarters of the entire Spanish population who could vote, voted. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty high, not going to lie. It basically boils down to my opinion in which that people are becoming more aware of the dangerous political and social issues that will, of course, impact them and the country's future. So, in my previous video, which is called like something like Baby Steps for the Future, or the Fight for the Future, or something like that, I talked about supporting anti-leftist groups, whether it be directly or indirectly, to combat the socialist communist agenda. However, th this Spanish election did confirm my belief that the division between the anti-leftists, which I'll go over in this election because there's six pe six people or six parties here, can cause greater harm than good. Like I said earlier, the party that won this election was the Spanish Socialists Workers Party, which originally started literally as a Marxist party, but has come slightly more right-wing by promoting more explicit, progressive, democratic, socialist beliefs and hard communist beliefs, but whatever, it literally started as a Marxist party, which of course continues in its current state to support the denigration of men and further the feminist agenda. So, within this election, there were three main, what you would call, kind of right-wing groups that uh, participated and basically stole each other's votes. The first group is under Pablo Casado. Cool. He's part of the PP party. Yes, he. it's the PP party over here. The People's Party. Uh, from what I could tell from, of course, Wikipedia and some various other sources, uh, it's a conservative Christian democratic political party, which is roughly, in my opinion, the equivalent to the Republican Party within the United States. If I'm wrong, someone might comment or tell me below in you know the comments. Its traditional opponent is, of course, the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, and <clears throat> it likes to have strong ties to both the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, apparently, they are also fairly pro-market, pro-life, uh, anti-homosexuality, and promote some sort, some sort of a limited immigration. However, they are still fairly pro-European Union, so they're very more aligned towards integration of European countries into a United States of Europe. However, in this past election, though, this party, well, not, the, not the Spanish Socialist Workers Party, but the People's Party, god dang it, uh, lost about half of their entire seats. So basically, that's like as, as if the Republicans lost half of all the seats, like in the Senate, in the House, and maybe even the White House. They lost half of their entire political position and is now less than 
1% more popular than the third largest party, which is actually this party over here under Albert Rivera, who apparently took 57 seats. And that group is called the Citizens Spanish Political Party, or just called Citizens. Uh, it's sometimes considered right-wing, even though it's also considered sometimes center-right, or just right of center. It's kind of a mixed bag, this party. <clears throat> Now it's basically the third largest party, right after the People's Party, like I said. Citizens is based out of Catalonia, and originally started as a center-left party, but now it kind of is mixed. Uh, it currently advocates, though, for what the people of Spain want. Within this description, everything uh, I say is linked down below in the description, but, for example... This Citizens Party will support a monarchy if the people say they want a monarchy, if they vote for one. However, they, this party will also support a, or instead support a republic, if the people want a republic. Go figure. This party also pr promotes more transparency within Spanish politics, decreasing taxes, and reducing the Spanish bureaucracy according to its policies outlined for the 2015 general election. This party is opposed, of course, to Catalan. Catalan nationalism, but does promote a Spanish populist message. It wants to create a Spain that could be great, regardless of background, social class, politics, etc. They just want Spain to be great. And time for the third supposed right-wing party. Now this party is down here. It is the fifth largest party now, and it's called Vox. No, not Vox website. That's garbage heap. But this is Vox, which means voice, apparently, in Spanish. It was founded in 2013. Um, it is the most recent party that was formed and split off from the People's Party in 2013. Just like Citizens, Citizens, this party was split off from the PP's party, and Vox did the same thing. It has a pro-life stance and opposes same-sex marriage. <clears throat> the party is anti-Islamic, it is critical of multiculturalism, but does support immigration from Latin America to repopulate Spain, because Spain actually has one of the world's lowest native fertility rates. The party is also very skeptical of the European Union, so it's Eurosceptic, and prefers Spanish sovereignty instead of being dominated by the EU. Um, yeah. It also claims to be anti-feminist, some people would call it far-right, and also promotes a pro-family message. In this most recent election, though, it won a little more than 10% of all the votes, or all the people's beliefs, despite being called alt-right, or far-right, and come, and came into existence less than 10 years ago, or even hell, even less than 6 years ago, it wasn't even, you know, formed. But now it is the fifth largest party, and I kind of support all three of these, you know, if all three of these were under a single umbrella party, you know, the PP party, the People's Party, the Citizens Party, as well as the Vox Party, then the uh, left, or the Socialists, would have had a much more difficult time in trying to secure victory. However, even if they did, even if it was a single political party that secured victory, a single election is not enough to radically change the direction of a country, at least within our current times. If a country wants to change and become prosperous with a good native birth rate and strengthens its borders, unlike Spain currently, it takes time to solidify a culture that promotes those ideas. My biggest gripe with this election is just, had the right-wing parties been unified and stayed together under the, you know, the People's Party, or all merged to become the Citizens Party, or the Vox Party, they could have actually dealt a serious blow to the Socialist Spanish Party, but of course I'm not a big person or a big expert on Spanish politics. And overall, it looks like Spain just doesn't recognize the danger it is in, much like the rest of Western civilization. In my opinion, of course, the polarization of political beliefs will continue will continue into the foreseeable future, and of course, we will see more of this type of division between political parties, most notably right-wing political parties in Western Europe, as well as the coming United States 2020 presidential election, the most important, or at least in my opinion, the most interesting groups to watch.
for the coming foreseeable future, if you're interested in politics, especially European politics, is both in France as well as Germany. Because I know, at least in Germany, Angela Merkel is becoming incredibly unpopular that the more right-wing party called Alternative for Deutschland, AFD, has been considered alt-right, far-right, but it's growing in popularity, which I think is a good idea. As well as in France, I think it's called National Front, led by Marie Le Pen, who is also gaining ground and support from the people. But the division between the right side of the political aisle, regardless of country, will leave, of course, their country more divided. And if currently, Spain, who already can be considered misandrous toward men, is going even further left towards more female domination of males, further destruction of the traditional fa nuclear family, which at this point in Spain it sounds like it's all dead, and the importation of Muslim men, who will, of course, destroy Spain once again. This will literally be the conquista, or re they will, there will be no reconquista towards Spain this time. There's no one to help bail Spain out when they're taken out by the Moors. So, these are just my thoughts and basically confirmed my belief that right-wing parties, despite their differences, need to come together against left-wing ideologues, socialists, communists, and that they're the like of, because socialists hate men, unfortunately. But, with that in mind, those are my thoughts. I'm Brazen Eagle. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you learned something, and had a great day.